So, anything interesting happened yesterday? Maybe something we got to talk about, get really excited about? Yeah, you know what happened. Viking signs at Area Smith. Let's talk about it here on the Locked On Vikings podcast. Oh, You are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Locked On Vikings podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, your pal, and the kid you copied off in math class. My name is Luke Braun. You can find me on Twitter at Luke Braun NFL. Show is on Twitter at Locked On Vikings. And thank you so much for making Locked On Vikings your first listen of the day each and every day. Today on the show, you can hear a little extra pep in my step because I'm hyped. I'm feeling it. The Vikings are going to the Super Bowl. I don't care about anything. Vikings signs a Darius Smith. Like, of course, that's not everything the Vikings need to do. They got a lot more work to do. But let's feel it for a minute. Let's be in the moment and just enjoy how cool it is that the Darius Smith is going to be a Viking. And there's a lot of reasons that it's very, very, very cool. You might have some concerns. I'm going to address those. You might not know about what makes him good. Is he actually good? Is he overrated? Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to address that too. By the end of this show, you're going to be doing backflips just like I am. So let's get into it. Uh, there's a couple other things to mention. Sean Mannion signed veteran minimum, who cares? Uh, and Daniel Hunter restructured his contract to make the cap space. And I guess let's start there because I think that's the first question everybody has, but we'll talk later about like how good Zadaria Smith actually is as a player. So we'll start with, uh, Daniel Hunter restructuring his contract. And I should say the Vikings restructured Daniel Hunter's contract. Daniel Hunter had absolutely nothing to do with this. He's not even in the state of Minnesota. He's in Houston right now. And I would say he doesn't care, but it's actually like a pretty good thing for Daniel Hunter too. Um, so the way the contract worked before we talked about this on Monday was that he has roster bonus, $18 million, but he has to show up to camp to get it. So there's no holding out here. Um, he has to show up to camp to get it. And 18 million is a lot of money. If he makes that 18 million and sees every dime of it and the rest of his base salary, he is making the third most money in the league among all edge rushers. Only Joey Bosa. And I want to say Khalil Mack are higher. That is going to satisfy him. That's enough right? Like 20 million is a lot of, that's a lot of money to make in one year. So the Vikings converted that to a signing bonus, which accounts against the cap a little bit differently. It spreads out the cap hit over four years. We've talked about that a ton. Um, so now it is four and a half million dollars in each of the next four years, but the 24 and 25 are void years. We deal with that when we deal with that. Um, and, but for now it saves $13.5 million on the 2022 cap. That is enough. 14 million a year is the average for Zadarius Smith. So more or less that pays for Zadarius Smith. And also we haven't seen Smith's full contract details yet, but it'll probably be a little backloaded. There actually might be a little more space than that. That could go to somebody else, like a center or a depth corner or something like that. So there's maybe still some more stuff to do. We'll deal with that when we get, when we know. Um, But for now it makes enough cap space for the Vikings to do this move. And it's good for Daniel Hunter. Daniel Hunter now no longer has to show up to camp to see that money. He just gets it. It's here. And we'll see where the payment structure is, is sometimes they want to spread it out for tax purposes, or sometimes that's a thing you negotiate with the team, whatever. But he has it. It's now his, ostensibly his money. He has access to it is maybe a way to put it. So Daniil Hunter should be happy with that, right? He's making $20 million. That's third most among all edge rushers. Um, and that pretty much should tear that situation. The other thing that happens here is that contract becomes virtually untradeable. If they traded Daniil Hunter right now, they would have to pay like well over 20 million net, like maybe even over 25 million net. So after accounting for the cap savings, that they would have, it's, it's undoable. You cannot do it. Um, and next year, it's also a negative to trade him cap wise. It costs you more money to trade him than it would to say, keep him and bench him all year. And the way the CBA works if he were to hold out next year, which next year is going to be a little interesting, he only gets five and a half million in new money and new actual cash flow next year. So that could be an interesting thing and he might want to work out a new deal. But if he holds out and it's the last year of his deal, before, if you held out, you could kind of hold out the duration of the contract and become a free agent and just say, I didn't play on my last year, sorry. And then just explain that to your next team. Le'Veon Bell style, he did that. He was kind of the famous one. Um, but now he, it tolls. So if he holds out a certain number of games, enough games to not accrue the season, I want to say like six games, um, then it tolls and it just copy pastes and we're right back to where we are. We were in 2024. It all, it does what Michael Pierce's contract did where nothing happens. So he's stuck and he's in a really bad negotiating position, but that is a next year problem. 
Um, we'll deal with that when we deal with that for now. He is already posted on social media how excited he is to play with Zadaria Smith. That is going to be the duo. These terrorizing rushers off of the edge, making tackles lives hell all day. It just doesn't feel like a Vikings team without that. So that's the cap angle of all of this. And then, of course, there's the actual scheme angle. And just there's a lot of stuff to talk about with Sedarius Smith, his injury, all of that. But I guess the thing right now that I've seen a lot is like the the second big, the first biggest detraction I've seen is, oh, no, this is going to cost so much. Sure, but it's super worth it. And honestly, 14 million a year for Zadarius Smith feels like highway robbery a little bit. That feels really low. <laughs> Maybe I'm being a homer about that, but Von Miller just made $20 million and he's like four years older. So even if you're accounting age into it, Zadarius Smith should probably be at least close to that, right? Should be that far behind Von Miller. Um, that is kind of my bit, my second take. My first takeaway was, OMG, we got Zadarius Smith, let's party. My second takeaway is, wait, he's only making $42 million over three years? That doesn't seem like that much. Um, so it feels like a pretty good deal. And it's a three-year deal too. This is none of this one-year rental crap. This is a three-year deal. This dude's a Viking. So I want to talk about how it fits into the defense. I want to talk about some of the other things about Zedarius Smith. How does he win? Why is he good? What about that back injury? We got to talk about all of that stuff. First, let me tell, talk to you about Grambling. I wonder if the Vikings odds changed a bunch after they got an edge rusher. It was a pretty big need. Like DJ Wanham was not good enough. And him being at edge rusher, trying to set edges lost them the Rams game. Like that was it. You talk about that punt return. No way. It was the fact that they could not stop the run. That's why they were able to put up 30 points on offense besides the punt return. If I remember 23 on offense, um, that was like a big problem. Like that was a game losing problem. And now it's a game winning strength, uh, out on the edge with, with Hunter and Zedarius, but assuming both of them stay healthy. I wonder if those odds change. If you want to go gramble on it, you can find that at betonline.com. Net. You can bet on football futures, of course. Look, the tournament's going on. The basketball tournaments are going on. So go go bet on those, of course. And there's bracket challenges and stuff. Even if your bracket's busted, I'm pretty sure there's still pools you can enter. You can, of course, bet on pro basketball, baseball, tennis, golf, hockey, whatever you like, even your favorite Vegas casino games. So head on over to betonline.net and get yourself a grambling at BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, so we've paid for Zadarius Smith. We figured that out. What about those injuries? So Zadarius Smith missed a whole bunch of 2021 with a bulging disc in his back. It is the same injury Daniil Hunter had, but Daniil Hunter had it in his neck, but it's the same thing. It's a spinal injury, um, just higher up on the spine for Daniil Hunter. So if you were listening to the show last offseason, around this time, I was talking about herniated discs and what that means. So I can get, we can get a little medical about this. Um, It's, uh, I think, fairly easy to understand. We can get a little medical about this. If you're not interested in that, you can skip ahead and we'll talk about some X's and O's. But basically, here's what's going on in Daniel Hunter's neck, or what went on in Daniel Hunter's neck. In between each one of your vertebrae, you have a little disc that's a padding thing. It's like a brake pad that that keeps things from rubbing up on each other. Inside that, it's like cartilage, and inside it is like this jelly-like substance. Think of it like a jelly donut. And in uh, Daniel Hunter's neck, the jelly donut ripped, and the jelly started leaking out. And that actually doesn't cause any pain on its own. And it's something that happens to more people than you think. You might actually have that condition right now, not know and never even realize it for your whole life and be totally fine. But that jelly can leak out and start irritating nerves and then that causes a bunch of pain and that's something that needs to be surgically cleaned out. You need to clean all that substance out. Um, The thing is, because of the delicate nature of the spine, you can't repair the tear. So you just kind of have to hope the jelly doesn't leak out anymore. That's what happened with J.J. Watt. The jelly leaked out. They cleaned it out, and then more jelly leaked out the next year, and then they had to go back in and clean it out, and that's another back surgery, and that ended his season twice in a row, and that's what everybody's super, super scared of. So that's why Daniel Hunter's contract was constructed the way it was. Zedaria Smith has the same injury, but slightly different. It's A, it's lower in his back, um, so it's a back injury, not a neck injury, but it's the same thing. It's a bulging disc, though. So that means the disc just sort of misaligned a little bit, or maybe it bulged a little bit. It's not fully torn. It might be at a greater risk of tearing than normal people just because of that. But the problem was it was bumping up against the nerve and the disc itself was irritating the nerve. So they had to go in surgically and do, it's called a microdisectomy. There's your word of the day. Uh, But they basically had to cut out the parts that were irritating nerves and cut out that tissue and then sew them up. And then that was it. It is a more minor version of the Daniel Hunter injury, but it's the same thing. 
So there is always, for the rest of these players' careers, going to be some risk that they have to miss the season because of this injury re-aggravating itself. For the rest of their lives, this could be a thing, um, which sounds really dramatic. But that appears to be worked into the contract somewhat. For one, it's a really cheap contract. $14 million a year in this cap environment is pretty low for an edge rusher. It's low enough where I think if you offered that to Daniel Hunter, he'd probably laughed at. He probably would have laughed at you. I guess this is a good, as good a time as any to transition into talking about his deal with the Ravens. People were really worried about that. Now, he signed the deal. He posted a picture of himself signing the deal. So we're past where the Ravens got, and that's not a problem right now. Um, but what happened with the Ravens was they had an offer on the table. They had agreed to terms. They had shaken hands on it. Between the agreed to terms and the actual signing, uh, Von Miller and somebody else signed big, giant, huge deals as edge rushers. And uh, Zadarius Smith was like, ah, this market's a lot more robust than I thought. Or his agent, more more accurately, was like, ah, this market's a lot more robust than we thought. Actually, we'll only sign this deal. And it was way bigger than the one that the Ravens originally agreed to. And the Ravens said, then now that is too rich for our blood. We're out. Um, the Vikings probably signed a deal that looked pretty close to whatever they offered the Ravens. So the Vikings basically said, yeah, we're, we're into that. We'll do that. Um, so there's your nice refreshing change for between Quasi and Rick Spielman is that Quasi is the one that's actually willing to go do a big splashy thing for a whole bunch of money in free agent. I mean, this is a first wave top tier free agent. This is the kind of guy Rick Spielman never signed. And I think if people really, really hated that about Rick, you have all the right in the world to be absolutely stoked off of your toes today. So I think I've gotten out ahead of all of the stuff that might make you worried about Zadarius Smith. And I don't think any of it is anything to be worried about. The only other thing, maybe, there was a fake thing around that that looked like a quote of Zadarius Smith talking about like quarterback leadership or something. That was fake. He's never said anything like that. There was a little bit of drama between uh, the Packers and Zadarius Smith about being a captain. He wanted to be a captain and the Packers players didn't vote him a captain. Um, and that was coming off of like a, a year where he had missed some time or something like that. It, I don't know. I don't really care about that. But if you do, that's a thing. I guess you can care about that. And there is, of course, the age thing. He will turn 30 in September. And that's nothing to be concerned about. Um, not only is do I think his athleticism is still perfectly fine. And he did just take a year off. That is better for the rest of his body. Um, but also... He has a particular play style that I think will age very gracefully. I think Zedarius Smith, whether it's with the Vikings or not, will be in the league for a decently long time. And I mean, look, Von Miller is still Von Miller and he's way older. I think that the shelf life of edge rushers is longer than he used to be. So I'm not too worried about him being 32 by the time he's in the last year of his contract, like whatever. So the moment you've all been waiting for, let's just rave y'all this dude rules he's really good at the sport and i guess there's two things i want to talk i mean everybody's going to talk about how in 2019 he led the league in pressures and by the way number two was daniel hunter um that was really cool 2020 wasn't quite as good but still very 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 good um and then 2021 he missed most of the season everybody probably remembers the 2019 monday night game against minnesota that might have been the game of zadaria smith's career it was it was the the division on the line i think i think they won they clinched the division that, that week. And it was uh, a drubbing. I think the final score was 23 to 10. The Vikings offense couldn't move at all. And it was mostly because Zadarius Smith knew all the plays. And I think that's the thing that excites me the most about him. So let's talk about that real quick. He knows the plays that you're calling. And that's terrifying because he has a lot of quickness and a lot of agility and a lot of stuff, but he is not like just a lineup and out athlete you kind of guy. Like, from a testing perspective, he is not that good of an athlete. Like, he does not look like a super, super crazy athlete. But he has a lot of technique and a lot of wisdom. This is a very cerebral, smart player. And I think that's how he wins. Um, by just being a step ahead of you and understanding exactly what you're doing. One of my favorite examples, he did a film room episode with Brian Baldinger on NFL Network. NFL Game Pass, I think you can find, you can find it on YouTube, too. Um, he did... He, he was talking about one of the sacks he got in that Monday night game against Minnesota. And he knew that it would be a one-on-one -on -one, and he knew what the protection was going to be. And the reason he knew what the protection was going to be is because the Vikings were under center and because it was a play action pass. The second he knew that, he knew he would that the protection was going to be such that he would be one-on-one, -on -one, like just off of tape study. Um, and the reason for that was, I mean, look, the Vikings were like kind of predictable that year. So it's kind of reflects poorly on the Vikings that he could figure that out at all. But if you remember, that Vikings offense was good. And Zadarius Smith was one of the only players in the league to figure it out. 
But basically, every time they were under center, if it was a play action pass, it was going to be a bootleg back toward Zadarius Smith. They were, it was something they were trying to do that year where they would run outside zone away from the superstar player, hope the superstar chases that down, and then you bootleg the other way. Um, that was like a way to get their superstar edge rusher out of the play. But if they read it and they figure it out, suddenly it's Zadarius Smith and Kirk Cousins and nobody between them. And he wreaked havoc on the whole game that way. And that whole game, he knew what the Vikings were running just off of tape study and tendency and the tells the Vikings had. And he managed to wreck a ton of shot because of it. He got three and a half sacks. He got a bunch of TFLs. He just lived in the backfield. It was an absolutely unreal game. And that's the kind of thing that he can do. And that's not the only time he's done that. He did that again on Monday Night Football against Atlanta, uh, I think earlier that season, uh, or maybe uh, it was the next season. But it was just something that he does. And it's something that he's just so insanely good at doing. And part of that too is paying off with his athleticism and his actual ability and how he actually beats you and how you can use him. I think all has to be a bit of a longer conversation. We'll get into it. Um, but first, let me talk to you about something that I've been doing every day. It's making me feel a little bit better. So look, there's a lot of really fun science out there about gut bacteria and like your gut health and how important your gut health is. But obviously like changing your whole diet around that can be really, really hard. I certainly don't have the discipline to do that. But Athletic Greens is exactly what I need. So Athletic Greens is like a powder that you can mix with water or whatever. It's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. Just something you have right in the morning and then that's it. You're done with it. It costs you less than $3 a day and you're investing in your health in a way that is easy to keep up with and also like highly effective. It is an all-in-one nutritional insurance and it's way cheaper than getting all of those different vitamin supplements yourself. The reason Athletic Greens even exists is because the founder had a whole bunch of gut health issues and to fix them was going to have to take like $100 a day worth of vitamins. So he created Athletic Greens as a, a cheaper substitute and basically spun that off into a whole business. So right now it is time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for 10 million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. All you need is Athletic Greens. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. That is athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Okay, this is the fun part with Zadarius Smith. All right, we got through all the scary stuff. We're not scared about that anymore. Right now, it's time for the fun stuff. This is the good stuff. Here is what makes Zadarius Smith cool. We already understand, like, he knows what you're doing, right? And he's just really good at study. It was something that he said, Arif Hassan asked in the introductory presser, what makes you so good? His first thing he said was study, that he knows what you're doing and he knows your tendencies and he knows your habits. Um, there was one really good sack where he, I think he knew that, I think it was a ten, Tennessee Titans right guard, whoever that was, um, had a habit when the defensive line tried to swipe his arms out of the way of pulling his arms out of the way, pulling the guards, pulling his own arms out of the way, um, and then being able to kind of hit him with a secondary punch. It's a pretty good habit to be in. If they swipe at you, you take your arms away so that um, they, they aren't controlling you in the way that they want to, right? And Zadarius Smith did a fake one did a fake swipe to get him to get his hands out of the way. And then Smith just blazed right by them for an untouched sack. It's the sickest thing I've ever seen. It's like this, such a, such a gotcha. It's so cerebral. It's such a, like a bait and switch. Super cool stuff. So stuff like that. But he also, I mean, he has a lot of quickness. In particular, he has quickness with his hands. He has, I would say, adequate agility. But again, this dude is not jumping out the gym. This is not the super athlete. That's why I think, like, look, if he's good, by 29, and I think it probably took him a while to get good. Um, I think he's he's gonna have a good 30s. And I, I remember wanting him really bad after he came off out of the Ravens. And what was interesting about the Ravens, when he was with the Ravens, he talks about this. They kind of noticed every time you're up against a guard, you beat him. That's kind of wild. Like every time we get you a one-on-one, -on -one, you beat him. So let's try to do that more. And then when he went to Green Bay, Mike Pettin and Mike Smith, their uh outside linebackers coach, both of whom work for the Vikings now, and was this was a big part of it. We're like, yeah, you win a lot of one-on-ones. Let's let's really get you one-on-ones. And so they started giving him, he calls it the rover position, but it's a pretty unique thing. And not a lot of players get this honor, which is basically you are chief freelancer 
And there are some calls where it is just that. And it is you read the play and you blow it up and everybody else just hold a gap. And and Zadarius Smith will just figure out where the play is going and destroy it. And that is like a play that worked. <laughs> it, was, it was like one of the best defensive plays Green Bay had in their arsenal. It was called Z Green Bay. Zadarius Smith do the thing Green Bay. Okay, so how does he do it? His favorite move is a two-hand swipe. Um, where it's it's very Mr. Miyagi, right? Hand on your shoulder, hand on your shoulder, move you to the side. And that can work really, really well against offensive linemen who stop their feet. And he talks about this too. This is a thing he looks for in film study. And so what ended up happening was the rover position meant that Arius Smith sits down during his film study and he looks at all five offensive linemen and he figures out which one he wants to attack the most. And then he lines up against that guy one-on-one a whole bunch. And a lot of the defensive fronts in Green Bay were designed around getting him specifically one-on-one. I mean, I cannot express enough to you. This dude is a focal point of a defense. And he's joining Harrison Smith, Daniil Hunter, and Eric Kendricks. This is insane. You cannot be too excited about it. The only way you can get too excited about this is if they end up getting hurt. And yeah, that's part of it, but it's kind of worked into it, so don't worry about it. At least, like, the value, it's reflected in the value, right? And we have to be scared that the back is going to happen, but that's just kind of always going to be a thing. Um, This is an insanely talented person, and he is a person you build a defense around. And I think maybe the best way to put it is to think about last year. Last year, the Vikings got a lot of sacks, and it was a very misleading stat because a lot of them were unblocked sacks that were manufactured via scheme. This is something Zimmer was always very good at. Hate Zimmer as much as you want for everything else. This was like, he was the god of this. But the reason that that's misleading is because those were unblocked sacks, and Zimmer had to, like create so much schematically. He had to dedicate so much schematic resource, so many players to these blitz schemes to be able to get them. And so every time this would be an unblocked blitz, it kind of wasn't all in. And so you get beat over the top a whole bunch and there was all these risks to it. And it was clearly not worth the cost, but it was the only way they could get pressure because they were so devoid of talent by the end of the season. Once Everson uh, Everson Griffin was gone, Daniel Hunter was gone. Um, It was, you know, Anthony Barr was in and out. They had just absolutely nobody who could rush the passer. The best thing they could figure out was what Sheldon Richardson bull rushing every play predictably and like whatever you got out of Michael Pierce. It was really bleak. And so you had to put together blitz schemes that generated unblocked free rushers. It had to be a free rusher because nobody could actually beat an offensive lineman. This is a guy who can always beat an offensive lineman. So instead of creating zero on ones or one on zeros, right? You had to get DJ Wanham unblocked. Now you can get Zedarius Smith into a one on one. It's so much easier to do that. You just do not have to work as hard. The Viking, it, it, the, the job of Viking defensive coach just got infinitely easier. And there's kind of no two ways about that. It's just easy. And imagine, okay, all we have to do is get a guy one on one. And that guy is not Daniel Hunter, Dalvin Tomlinson. <laughs> or Eric Kendricks, or Harrison Smith. And we just need to make sure that none of those, and that guy isn't Daniil Hunter or Dalvin Tomlinson. You want to double, or Harrison Phillips. You can double team all three of those guys and be screwed. (laughs) That is what we're talking about here. The price is right. The scheme fit is unbelievable. The coaches that figured out how to use him perfectly in Green Bay are here for as many problems as Mike Pettin had with his run defense and stuff. He nailed this one. And now that's here. There is just, it is awesome. And just be over the moon today, y'all. We've earned it, all right? We've suffered enough. Let's be happy because this freaking rules. I don't care if they only win eight games or whatever. I I couldn't give less of a crap. This is going to be awesome. It's going to be fun to watch on Sundays. And that's what we're all here for, right? So... I want to, I think I want to talk more about Zadarius Smith. If I can find, if I maybe do a little more like deeper tape stuff um, or talk about more front things, X's and O's or whatever, we'll talk about whatever else goes down to other free agents. Maybe we actually get into the draft season stuff that I talked about at the beginning of the week, whatever, we'll figure it out. I will talk to you tomorrow. In the meantime, check out the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. Check out the Locked On NFL Podcast on YouTube as well. I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, Skull.